Hi there, this is Steph Cuthbert and welcome to Monday Morning Chat. Um, I have actually been sick all week so I'm going to keep this one fairly short as I'm still not really, really well. Um, but I wanted to talk about a couple of things this week including my 10-year-old uh, daughter's blog and uh, talk a little bit about some, uh, I guess, revelations that I've had regarding writing this week. So let's get to it. A couple of weeks ago, my daughter started offering to help me um, compile some things for my blog. Um, blogging isn't really my strong suit, which is why um, I tend to keep my blogs quite short. And I sort of go for uh, a lot of visual stuff, particularly on my What's Inspiring Me posts. Um, so my daughter's help... Um, was very welcome and um, what actually came out of it was uh, the decision um, I guess between both of us but it was fueled by her um, was for her to start her own blog. Um, tween Bookshelf is a book blog um, for tweens and written by a tween. Um, I think it's a great concept. I think kids like to hear what other kids um, think of books and uh, and I think that it, it puts a different perspective on a review um, when it comes from a child instead of an adult. The first review was the Mapmaker Chronicles Race to the End of the World. Um, I think this was a really great place to start. Um, Alison's a, an Australian writer um, and was um, easily accessible, I guess, for Ellie to to send um, a link to the blog. And Alison's been really, really great about it. So um, it was really exciting for my daughter. Um, but the, the actual process of creating a blog with a 10-year-old um, really challenged me in a way that I didn't actually think that it would. Um, once we started, it became very apparent that I wasn't running the show. <laughs> My daughter had very much her own personality and her own ideas that she wanted to to put into the blog, and that was just fantastic um, because it you know it really is hers. Um, but we actually got to the point where she asked me to read um, over her review that she wrote, and I, um, as a writer and as someone who is uh, in the process of editing her own book, I naturally got out my red pen and started rearranging some of her sentences and what happened was that Ellie um, turned around and she said to me I really don't like the way that you've written that and I said well it's a much cleaner much tighter sentence and Ellie said but I like the way that I said it and for me um, that was a huge moment because not only did it give me the signal to back off and mind my own business a little bit with this project of hers, but it was also a big wake-up call for my own writing. Um, I think sometimes I, I get so caught up in other people's visions, my editors or um, people who have read early drafts. I get caught up in the way that they think that the book should be written and ultimately um, every word, every choice that is made in the Amulet of Hearts and anything else I've written comes down to me and um, I really love that my 10 year old encapsulated that in one very actually ironically tight sentence. The other interesting thing that happened this week which really got me thinking was that I, I had a telephone call from a, a person that I went to high school with and she had an idea for a story and wanted to talk about writing and the publishing process and during the conversation I actually realized that I knew a little bit about writing now um, and that kind of struck me um, because I always tend to think of myself I guess as a bit of a novice and uh, I look up to um, amazing authors like Neil Gaiman and Garth Nix and Kate Forsyth and a string of others and get quite in awe of of other writers, other authors who are doing things that I wish that I was doing or I wish I had done. Um, but it sort of made me realise that um, everybody is an expert to someone else. So um, while this girl 
was looking to me for information about writing and I found that strange. I'm sure that writers out there who I admire and look up to, um, they, they find that equally strange um, that people look to them and they in turn probably look to someone else, though I'm not really sure who Neil Gaiman looks to. Um, I'm, I'm sure he, he probably has a direct link to, uh, to the divine. Um, but for me, it was um, part of a long process of me becoming more comfortable um, and more confident as a writer. Um, I think that there is almost this sort of culture that um, your uh, successful writer with uh, his or her salt once you have been published. And I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, but have never sort of applied the same logic direct to myself. So this was an interesting moment for me. Now, as far as reading goes, I actually haven't done a lot. Um, I started the flywheel and I got about 10 pages in, but I've been really, really sick and uh, not the kind of sick where you read in bed all day, but the kind of sick where you actually sleep and watch junky TV um, like Dawson's Creek. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, I also in the background have been um, mulling over some ideas for, uh, for some new books that I'm looking at doing, which will be very different to what I'm working on at the moment. Um, and uh, hopefully this project will sort of happen. But, um, but that's about the extent of what I've been able to muster myself up to do this week. Um, so hopefully by the time I do the, um, the next Monday morning chat, I will have something a little bit more interesting to talk about. Um, but in the meantime, um, please catch up with me on Twitter or Facebook and I hope that you have a great week. Okay, thank you for joining me. Bye.